Welcome to Business Impacting the Space Coast, the podcast keeping you in the know on small business in Brevard County. Business Impacting the Space Coast is sponsored by Ideal Impact Media, your partner in video marketing and brand storytelling. I'm here with Lori from Grand Events by Lori. Now, you're a certified wedding planner through the Bridal Society. Yes. And we've had the chance to work some weddings together. Yes. A recent one uh, right here in town. It was a lot of fun. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to getting a wedding planner. A lot of people think, oh, my mother can do it. And I really want to talk about that. What are some of the pitfalls? Uh, What are the reasons to have a professional certified wedding planner? What is the difference between a wedding planner and an amateur, like a family member maybe? So that's a really good question and I get a lot of that and come like more closer to like two months before the wedding, that's when they start reaching out because the family's being overwhelmed. They're realizing that they're not going to be able to enjoy the wedding because they're going to be working the wedding and not be there for the formalities and the stress and the anxiety and making sure everything goes okay. And also they don't want to be the bad guy at the wedding when something goes wrong or they can't handle it or they don't know where to step up to help. For example, the cake doesn't show up. Who's going to handle that? The mom's going to be in there not missing formalities that the daughter's doing or that her son is doing. And then you also got to go out there and execute plan B. And that's not something that any family member or the bride or groom should have to do on their wedding day. They should leave in the hands of a professional where they come, they party, they enjoy their special day, their vision comes to life, and they leave it to the professionals to handle all the back end work and be there from start to finish, from setup to breakdown. Yeah, there's a lot that there's goes lot. into making a wedding go off without a hitch. Yes. And having somebody there who's seen it, done it, understands how to avoid disasters so that no one else has to deal with it. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that you've dealt with that the bride and their family, they don't even realize was going sideways, that you got back on the tracks and everything went smoothly so everybody could enjoy their day and and have fun. And that's something, you know, emergency kit comes into play. Someone gets a, you know, spills red wine on their wedding dress. You don't have what you need unless you're prepared for that. And those are things that we guide the bride and groom. Either we'll bring our emergency kit or we'll suggest, hey, these are other things to have on your wedding day. Should this go wrong or should something like this happen? Wow. Yeah. And the timeline is the biggest thing. You know, I really want to be prepared. I want to understand the timeline. Mm -hmm. While it just may look like, oh, four o'clock, there's going to be a ceremony. 430, there's going to be X, Y, Z, and we're going to move through it like that. This is a roadmap of how the wedding and the events are going to go down. Talk to me about what you're seeing when you're putting that together and and kind of the difference between someone who doesn't do it every day and someone who does. The ceremony. You have to have your lighting. You have to have all your cameras set up ahead of time. I'm not going to bring the viral party out to start the ceremony until I have the okay, you're good to go, the DJ's good to go, the speakers are working, all the family members in the room where I need them to be, everyone's lined up the way that they need to be. There's no way that a family member can be, example, a mother of the bride. She's the first one to walk in the ceremony. There's no way that she's going to be behind to cue everyone else in and line them up until the end. So that's like a good example right there. The other one is catering. Catering has to have a timeline and they have to be ready to go. The champagne toast, they're not going to pour wine or champagne or any drinks or, you know, have the bar open during that hour after the formal introduction. They want to be ready to go and make sure everyone is in the room or in the venue, that all eyes are focused on the couple. That's why you're there. So things like that are really the importance of the timeline. Also knowing like sparkler send off. You and I know how long that takes to get everyone lined up, especially at the end of the night when the bar has closed. That can take a couple of minutes. Well, the venue lights out, you know, doors close at X amount of time. We have to be on standby making sure everyone is out and then we only have so many hours or time after the ceremony or after the, you know, reception is ended to have everything out because they're not responsible for your belongings. So all those things are all on the master timeline and that we follow and then you know. That's a very good point. You know, the timeline, we live and die by it. And to make sure that things run on schedule and the train stays on its tracks is is so important. Now, there's lots of other events that happen on the day of. And tell me a little bit about your process. Are you always on the day of or where do you get involved with your brides? Where does that beginning and end? So with wedding planners, typically most have different packages to offer. There's the month day of, which is, for me, it's the number one package. 
Um, you don't just work on the day of, you're there the month of. There's no way that I can follow up with you or any other venue the day of your wedding. Example, timeline, most vendors want that two weeks ahead of time. You have to be communicating what's your arrival time. Example, when you're doing the catering and they need vendor headcount for food. They're not going to have that on the day of. They need to have all that ahead of time to know what they're you know, feeding and how many plates to prepare for. So things like that are really important as well. There are so many decisions that a bride and their family have to make between vendors and, and all the professionals they're going to have to work with. What is the difference between an experienced professional uh, wedding planner like yourself mm -hmm. and maybe one that just thinks it's a fun idea and they just started doing it last month. Like, how can a bride tell and, and what should they be looking for and asking questions about? I would definitely direct them to one of my websites, either The Knot or my own website, and let them read testimonials. That way they have and they know a little bit about my background. They can read who I am, what I do, my experience. So for me, one of the things that I think stands out for me is I was in several weddings and I saw backhand how stressed the bride was or how stressed out you know, the bridal party was. And I said to myself one day, how can I take that stress off of these people? And I enjoy events and I enjoy doing those things. I've always been an event planner you know, for my own personal events. So one day after working a wedding show that I put together, I was approached saying, you know what, you really should become a wedding planner. You would be great at it, an event planner, like you have the talent and you have the passion for it. And I took that and I ran with it. And that's how I went through and I was like, you know, what? I wanna be certified. I wanna show that I have the training, that I have the experience. And that's where I became a certified wedding planner through the Bridal Society. We go to trainings, Illuminize, we have tools, we have templates, we have everything that we can utilize for ourselves to make us the experienced wedding planner and to be who we wanna be. We can train ourselves, we can meet, we have questions, we work with other bridal um, planners or wedding planners that are through the Bridal Society. We're a team, we wanna help, we wanna to work together. You know, I always have that motto, there's no I in team. You know, if I have a wedding that I can't do, I wanna to refer them to the next, you know, person on the list that can take it. I wanna make sure, even though I couldn't help that bride, and I wanna follow up with them, make sure that they got all their questions answered and that they were able to secure another wedding planner. Those are things that, you know, we have a forum we can reach out to, we have questions, we have a group that comes together, it's awesome. No bride wants to be put on hold. No bride wants to have to play a waiting game. They're super excited to play on the day that they've been dreaming of, and they want to be there, and they want to meet, and they want to know who you are. And I think that personal touch-based meeting, complimentary, really helps them feel that they are an important part in my life and an important part in their day. And I think that really distinguishes me of who I am, not comparing myself to anybody else. But for me, that's what I find works for me, and it makes me feel good about what I'm doing. The way we always view a wedding is a team. There has to be collaboration. You mentioned communication. Tell me a little bit more. You're kind of like the coach. You're at the top of the chain there. Tell me a little bit, how do you make a team come together to make sure things are as amazing as possible for the bride and their family? What I like to do is I always go into the groom suite, the bride suite, or you know their hotel. I'll call their hotel room, ask them how they're doing, if they need anything. When they arrive at the venue, I'm there to greet everybody, help them unload their cars, anything that they need, make sure they have refreshments, water, drinks, check on them all the time, you know, and let them know, hey, I'm gonna be in the ballroom or I'm gonna be inside the venue or the reception area, setting up, getting everything ready for your big day. And I kind of pep them, like prep them, letting them know like, this is gonna be an amazing day. Like I show the excitement, the love that I have for their day coming. And I think that really just makes them get like that, that push and that ump that really like gets them super excited for their day. You know, it's not just you plan one day or one month, there's a lot of planning into a wedding and there's a lot of back end. So also brides don't realize how many back end hours you put into planning their wedding. It's not just you show up on the day of and coordinate and plan it. You're reaching out to vendors, you're following through, you're checking in on them, you're having your client meetings, you know. You're also recommending preferred vendors because you wanna make sure that all those vendors have a good reputation, that they work well with you, that they you know, you want to make sure they're the right fit for that bride and groom based on what they're telling you they need and what they're preferring and what they expect on their wedding day. Every wedding planner will tell you the same thing. Preferred vendors list is a must. You have to know your vendors. You have to have a relationship with them. And I think that really helps too when you have a good team on the wedding day that really shows the execution of the successful wedding that they planned. So the wedding's done after the wedding. What happens then? Oh my gosh. I don't stop working after the wedding. 
Um, I follow up with them, ask them how their honeymoon was. I follow up with them and I'm still going over contracts after their wedding because I have a spreadsheet. All right, this couple should have gotten their photos six to eight weeks. At the end of eight weeks, I have the date marked. I'm gonna reach out to them. Hey, I wanted to make sure you got your photos. If they did, great. If not, I'm gonna re reach out to that vendor and say, hey, I just want to double check, make sure we didn't miss the execution of delivery. You know, are we expected to receive the photos, you know, within this week or videographer, you know, anything like that. A lot of people don't realize that. <clears throat> they don't forget or they're getting super excited. Or I'll ask the photographer, videographer, hey, can we have a sneak peek? That makes the bride's day. The other thing too that I do is I send an email to the bride and groom. I send them a text, let them know to check their email. And every vendor that I worked with that day, I go ahead now and I send them a review template with all the vendors' websites, social media accounts, and I ask them, it would mean a lot to us in the industry if you could please leave a review of how your day was and your suggestions, opinions, or you know, rate us. And we really, truly appreciate that. And a lot of brides respond, oh, I didn't even think about that. And I think that also helps my preferred vendors as well. As a vendor, we really appreciate that. So that's awesome that you're being proactive we really appreciate the feedback and obviously positive reviews or any reviews just to kind of let us know mm -hmm. uh, what, what happened because I know after the wedding, the bride and groom, like they have their whole life to start. Mm -hmm. So another reminder, another layer on that is always really appreciated. Lori, how can people find you? Yeah, so you can find me on The Knot. You can find me on my website, www.grandeventsbylori, Instagram and Facebook. I really appreciate you spending some time here. You know, us being able to talk is always great. Getting some education out of it too. You know, there's always things that are changing and improving. And I look forward to our next wedding. So thank yes, you, Lori. Likewise, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. It was an honor. Business impacting the Space Coast, where Brevard gets down to business. Sponsored by Ideal Impact Media, your partner in video marketing and brand storytelling.